A new report confirms members of the Biden family were the recipients of payments related from Hunter Biden's international business deals. Speaking with Fox News' Maria Bartiromo, Republican Senator Ron Johnson unveiled that a Chinese-owned bank headquartered in L.A. handed over a cache of financial records that strengthens the House Oversight Committee's investigation. Here's Johnson on Sunday Morning Futures. Let's listen. The bank rec records we got, and this is pretty interesting, we got them from Cathay Bank. You know, is that the Chinese uh, Communist Party? Is that a shot across, across uh, President Biden's uh, bow saying, listen, this is some of the information we have. Uh, if you don't toe the line, if you don't uh, do uh, things that uh, please us, uh, we're going to even provide even more information. A bank from China, let's face it, uh, the Communist Party controls uh, those types of institutions. They, they willingly gave us the, uh, the documents that backed up the Treasury records. The GOP has maintained the Hunter Biden probe is aimed at uncovering any connection the president might have had to China. Now, Joe Rogan gave his own take on Biden's link to China. Here's what he said in a recent episode of his podcast, The Joe Rogan Experience. Let's watch. He's full of bluster and he lied a lot about his record and his, his education background. He lied about a bunch of things. He's a he's a goofy old politician that's career been politician. in that career. Yeah. He's been in that lying business forever. And and the China money that he's been getting for years, Crazy. though, hooking up his son, Crazy. The, the computer, denying the computer when it's like, bro, you could see it, bro. Crazy. It, it, before the FBI declared that this was real, I was already watching videos of him like, bro, how are you going to say this is not real? It's all over the internet it's all over the suppressed internet it before the election yeah they suppressed it off of twitter and the fact that the liberals keep saying that there's nothing to that like what are you talking about if that was trump if that was trump and donald trump jr was doing street crack with hookers in vietnam and getting foot jobs you'd be and, like and getting 10 million dollars from yes, from these places where he's not equipped yes. to have those type of jobs yes Ten, he was getting money from china and from ukraine Look, of course it's true that if it were Trump, the liberals would be losing their minds over it. Look at how they're framing the Stormy Daniels payoff. I think I said this yesterday. Yeah. It is an election. It is a potential uh, ele uh, election campaign finance crime. But liberals aren't treating it like a campaign finance they crime. The salacious they love the salacious of aspect it. of it. Exactly. So if it if the shoe were on the other foot, I think, yeah. of course, it's true that liberals would be all over it. They were all over, rightly, I think, some of the nepotism issues with the Trump members of his family, giving them actual staff positions, giving them offices in the White House. All of that was inappropriate. I think liberals were right to point that out. And I think Republicans, conservatives are right to balk at the idea that it's supposed to be a nothing burger, that... Um, uh, Biden's children were getting these huge sums mm -hmm. of money from whomever it was, in this case, uh, well, right. China, and, and they need to, the Republicans need to keep their eye on the prize because ultimately the antics of Hunter Biden involving drugs and sex workers or whatever, who cares? He's not the president. Um, what matters is if he used his last name to engage in an influence campaign that roped in his father in some way. That's what we need to know. And then, of course, we also need to know about the law enforcement decisions that led to um, the suppression of the laptop story and all that, what, why they didn't, why the FBI didn't want to look, you know, why they slow rolled it, that, those kinds of things. So I'm glad the Republicans are looking into this. Um, you know, there's a lot, there's always be a lot being promised in terms of the Hunter Biden probe that we're going to have some big revelation that never quite comes out. Again, we, ha we have learned that you know, Hunter Biden was clearly trying to trade on his last name uh, in a variety of schemes. Um, what we, we don't have any smoking gun. And, and, we, and we know, I would say we can say with confidence that in his pitch to, uh, to governments for his influence, his pitch was, you know, how close he is to his father. Dad takes his calls. Dad loves him, wants to help him out, the big guy, et cetera. We don't yet know on the other end that President Biden really did anything um, uh, to in to encourage that or, you know, to become involved with it. It's possible. And we For need sure. further investigation. For sure. I, my concern would be this from an electoral perspective. Back in 2016, a very small number of insightful journalists, including Nathan Robinson at Current Affairs, pointed out that to the extent that Donald Trump vulnerabilities were this kind of corruption, longstanding um, kind of uh, inappropriate criminal behavior, being a bad landlord in New York, uh, making false accusations against the Central Park Five, being not paying his debts, those kinds of things. To the extent that that sort of thing might have made him look bad. 
a candidate like Hillary Clinton, who had the Wall Street speeches and all of this kind of financial propriety on her end, would n neutralize it. It would be a wash. And then suddenly, instead of having this kind of huge vulnerability that you could go after Trump for, you'd have to find other things. And in fact, that's what happened. I think in, in large part, to the extent that a cleaner candidate could have landed some real um, blows against Trump and maintain a kind of moral high ground, Hillary Clinton was not that candidate. Certainly and the, not. And the concern <laughs> is, is, Donald, is um, Joe Biden going to get into a situation because of the messiness yeah. and the implications around his son and other family members are implicated in this as well, that if it becomes another matchup between him and Donald Trump, that he's not going to have the clean hands that he largely was able to hold on to, partly because of the suppression of the Hunter Biden laptop story, going into the 2020 race. Yeah, I mean, it's who, who raised this point? I, I think it was Joe Rogan, mm -hmm. uh, maybe in that same interview about how, um, you know, it wasn't facilitating the exact same way because it wasn't a campaign payment, but the Clintons back in the 90s tried to keep quiet all sorts of um, uh, sexual matters involving Bill. So this is not, this was not unique to Trump. So it, it is, you're right, there. Then, it's, then it's both sized enough that you yeah. can't make, make a thing about it. Yeah, and, and look, does it matter if it's uh, technically breaking the law versus kind of general impropriety mm -hmm. when the part that you're really mad at with Trump is not the technically breaking the law? Because again, Hillary Clinton violated that same election law issue and was fined for it. Mm -hmm. But the impropriety, no. Obviously, you, you care about the salacious right. aspect. She violated that law paying for a discredited intelligence report yes. that caused a media firestorm and wrongly influenced a lot of national yes. commentators to believe that uh, Trump was literally compromised by Russia and that Russia's influence over our government and and all sorts of things. And the sexual deviant. Yeah. <laughs> P-tape. <laughs> P-tape. Right. You know, so look. Right. I don't. I don't know what to do with this. Like d Democrats seem to think that they can make these accusations of disinformation and bad faith, and, and these things are going to go away. It's common sense. Like people have a common sense, intuitive understanding of what is and isn't an appropriate behavior. And you can say what you you can you, you can say that what Trump did was different because he's being, you know, there's a, a, a law that he violated, and the New York AG is going to get him, and all of that. You have to, at some point, reckon with where voters are coming from. Voters are, frankly, I think, are kind of sick of all of it. I think voters would, Republican voters, conservative-leaning voters, would really prefer that Donald Trump weren't in, in any of that mess. They would prefer that he weren't an election denier. They would prefer that that embarrassing uh, uh, Georgia call didn't happen, where he's trying to influence the election. And Democrats, frankly, if they would admit it to themselves, would prefer to have a candidate that, whose children weren't running around causing this kind of embarrassment. You know, it's, it's a real indictment of an American political system that they can't seem to put forward a candidate who doesn't have an embarrassing family situation that's undermining their integrity in office. But here we are. And at a that's certain point— what democracy point, gives you. It gives you Hillary and Trump. Well, it gives you Biden and Trump. I would argue that that's Might give what, us Biden and Trump again? <laughs> I think that's what an oligarchy gives you, when the only people who can run for president are people from political legacies, dynasties like Clinton's, or who are themselves literal well, billionaires, not, right. literal billionaires like Donald Trump, who can largely self-finance their uh, campaigns and weather a lot of the political storm. I don't think a different kind of person could have defeated, coming from nowhere, you know, 16, 17 other candidates, whatever it was in the Republican primary, uh, when he was not the favored one. Back in 2016. Well, I mean, obviously his considerable wealth was a tremendous advantage. It, it was his easy access to, um, to, to advertising he didn't have to pay for, Absolutely. media attention that Absolutely. really, really worked and that's, his advantage. You know, Joe Biden's a former VP. Yeah. He ran for president many times before that, unsuccessfully, uh, but some combination of having uh, Obama's boost helped him in key states like South Carolina. He was the person the Democratic Party rallied behind, and that's how you get to be president. And at the same time we're seeing that, we're seeing the Democratic Party hinting at the idea that they will not even allow a primary debate because they are very good at shutting out anybody who is not an anointed, chosen candidate uh, to rise up through the ranks. And so we don't have a real primary system. They're much better at that than the Republican Party, which cannot cannot <laughs> exercise control over who's running. And it, it's a messy, uh, actual battle. There are and actual arguments. Thing. There are actually ideological divides. Uh, there's tactical divides. Yeah. Very different from the Democratic yeah. Party. And I think that's why the Republican Party, frankly, is attractive to a lot of people right now. Mm. There's more ideological diversity. There's at least the perception that some people are fighting for the public because they are fighting each other. Mm -hmm. Whereas the Democrats uh, fetishize 
a kind of solidarity to to Washington that is frankly repellent to the average voter who wants to see fidelity to them, not to their other colleagues in Congress. Mm. Well, next on Rising, Congresswoman Nancy Mace will join us to discuss the Nashville shooting, abortion, and more. Stay tuned for that.